we're going to be um, doing an experiment with all three of our animals and our habitats that we've created for them. Let's look at some questions on the board I have on the chart and see if we can use this for all three of your animals. What about the frog? Sometimes in the day, the girl, she'll pull the LED down and then she'll climb up on it. Where in the habitat that we've created for them do they, does the animal spend most of its time? They spend most of their time like down at the rock. Why do you think more of you have seen them at the bottom of the tank than at the top? Because it's where they're Fiddler crabs now. Eric, where do you think it spends most of its time or what have you observed in your habitat? I observe that it spends most of its time behind the water. Today they were talking about water and air before we performed the experiment and how, although they're both non-living elements, they greatly affect the survival of the animal. What do we know about a habitat that contains living and non-living things? Sharon? Living things require non-living things to live. When the students made their predictions, they based it on prior knowledge um, and a lot of hands-on experience with these habitats. What if I were to close off, totally close off the top of the vent of this? What would I be taking away? The air. What do you think would happen? Yes, Rachel. They would possibly die. What else? They We're going to see how light affects the animal in its habitat, how it reacts to the change in light. Before we um, experiment, we make a what? It starts with a P. Prediction. A prediction. What do you use to help you think ahead? Prior knowledge. Very good. Very by having this activity that we did today, it allows them to work in co cooperative groups and to have ownership for their own learning. Talk with your group and make a prediction on each animal. What do you think is going to happen once the light is shown on them? They might go to land and it will be dark and they might go to water and it could be light. She put down for the millipede, when I flash the light on the millipede, I think it would wake up. Who agrees with that? You can see in the little corner over there at the bookshelf, it's like a little dark over there. And they, can, and they still go over there. Um, what about the millipedes over here in this group? I think it would be more active because it likes the dark and it always comes out. As you are observing with your teammates, you will record it on your sheet down below where it actually it says what happened. So the first animal that you're going to be reporting on is the frog. And my favorite part of the lesson was when the children had opportunities to actually ex perform an experiment on the three habitats. I thought the frogs would get scared and run around, but really they went to the light and then they went to the dark. The students seemed willing to share their observations and experiences um, with each other within the groups. They really enjoyed talking about what they saw and how it related to what their prediction was. Well, my prediction was they'll go away from the light. And what did you find out? The that they, well, they kept moving like back and forth to light to dark. I predicted that the crab will go to the dark part, but they um, went to the light part. Put it on part of I don't think the children would have gotten as much out of um, watching a video and actually doing book work related to um, this activity as opposed to actually doing it hands-on like they did. Really watching for how the animals would react with the light or without the light.